today I want to talk about a column that I published on Monday and the headline of the column, why I remain skeptical about the A's grandiose Vegas plans. Now, obviously I've written about the A's before, but there have been some things recently that I've learned or thought about that I kind of wanted to explore again. And this column kind of the genesis of it for me was when I started thinking about the idea that the A's are going to play the 2025 to 2027 seasons, three years, in a place that right now is undetermined. They've got one more year in Oakland, the final year of their lease there. They moved to Vegas, the new stadium, in 28. So there are three years in the interim that are not yet accounted for and will be accounted for. And my first thought here was, has this ever happened in baseball? And the answer is no. There's never been a team play three years in a city that is not its home. The last time it happened in baseball was nearly a century and a half ago. It was the Hartford Dark Blues. They played one season in Brooklyn, only one. They played one game in Hartford that year, but then they moved back to Hartford. Now, when a team relocates, it's quite common for it to play in a ballpark in its new city that isn't necessarily its new park. The Nationals are a great example of that. Three years at RFK Stadium while they were waiting for Nationals Park to be built. But the A's are not going to do that. They're not most likely going to be playing in Las Vegas, though that is one of the options. Summer Lynn, Nevada, the home of their AAA team. But they're talking about Sacramento. They're talking about Salt Lake City. They're also talking about Oracle Park in San Francisco, and here is the interesting catch here, as first reported by the San Francisco Chronicle. For the A's to keep collecting their money from NBC Sports California, their regional television sports network, they've got to stay in the Bay Area, and no, Sacramento doesn't count. So that's one incentive for them to stay at Oracle. It might even be an incentive for them to stay in Oakland, as crazy as an idea as that sounds. That contract paid the A's $67 million last year. And as I wrote, you think John Fisher's walking away from $67 million easily based on all we know about him since he took over as owner in 2005? Uh, I don't think he's walking away so easily. The other part of this, or there are two other parts that are interesting to me here. So the A's, like any team moving into a new ballpark, plan to ramp up their payroll ramp up as they go forward and prepare to have their permanent relocation. Well, the figures I reported in this column, figures I received from a source with knowledge of the situation, he said that the A's plan is to have payrolls of 130 million to 150 million leading up to the permanent relocation to Vegas. So wherever they are, they're going to ramp it up to 130 to 150 probably, I don't know, 26, 27, 28 in that range. And then once they get there, 170 million plus. Now this is problematic as well. The A's, first of all, have never spent more than 92 million under John Fisher. He took over in 2005, that's their highest payroll. They are suddenly going to change their whole business model. That's the premise here. The whole thing is changing. Okay, let's assume that that is the case. It has to be the case. That's the plan they presented, essentially, to Major League Baseball to get the votes that they needed. Okay, they're going to attract free agents when they're playing in Sacramento or Summerlin or Oracle Park. Or, I don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe they'll spend enough money and players won't care. But the other part of this is John Fisher will be spending a lot of money before he gets into the new park where the revenues are expected to be much greater. He's going to engage in deficit spending. John Fisher? Based on all we know about him, I don't know about that. And finally is Vegas itself, the 40th largest TV market in the country, 40th. They'll be the smallest in baseball once the A's get there. So if you're going to play in that smaller media market and have lower revenues because of that from your local TV and media contracts, you're going to need to draw people. You're going to need to have very strong attendance. Well, the A's plan is, yes, we can do that because of the tourism industry in Vegas and because the local population has shown definitely support for the two professional franchises that are there right now. 
the NHL's Golden Knights and the NFL Raiders. Well, that's not apples to apples, first of all. And second of all, if you want to have strong attendance, if you're going to build this robust fan base, you better put a competitive team on the field. And that's where it goes back to the need to spend money. And I talked to team president Dave Cavill for this column, and he said, yes, it is necessary for us to be competitive to enact the plan that we want to. Again, this is John Fisher, his owner. He's going to do all this. Now, maybe all this will happen. The A's have their projections. They have their plans. They seemingly have it all figured out, at least in their own heads. But past performance is an indicator of future performance. Is it not? We hear that all the time in television ads, right? So in summing all of this up, in considering the A's history under Fisher, in considering the future, I'll just put it this way, and this is how I wrote it in the column. I'll believe it when I see it.